Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Can you hear me? Um, so my name is Ron Brennan. I'm from Buffalo. I own a digital marketing and consultancy called Kanai Consulting Group in Buffalo. And I work with Ben. We run the local Buffalo WordPress community. If you come to WordCamp Buffalo, uh, I'm one of the <laughs> organizers every year for that event. And then come out here and uh, help out Michelle from time to time with the uh, WordPress Rochester community. So what I wanted to talk about, and actually I didn't even know Ben was going to be doing his talk today, but it's kind of neat that we're kind of going after each other because his <laughs> set the foundation for what I'm going to talk about, which is page builders, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I don't want to die, I'm not going to dive like too much into the differences between each particular page builder. My hope here today is to show you that, because um, I hear Ben often talk about when, he'll, when, somebody, when he takes over a client's site and they have a page builder, or when we have somebody come on our uh, meetup group and they, they're using a page builder, and Ben's just like, all right, click here, click here. You know, he just is like, whatever, and just, just try and click this thing. But what I hope to show is that there's actually some consistency between all of these different page builders and the general principles that they all utilize. But what we're also going to see is that a lot of the wish list that Ben just talked about in his talk about things that we hoped uh, WordPress core would do are, ba are baked into a lot of these page builders just by default. But we're also going to see what uh, I think this gentleman was talking about is that because you have everything available to you in the page builders, there's a lot of bloat and these sites can, you really have to finesse them to get them to run at a speed that is co comparable to just like a, a WordPress block builder theme that's just using text blocks and uh, just basic blocks. So without further ado, let's get into starting to talk about some of this. And I also want to jump into a page builder demo and just take a look at what some of them are. So before I get started here, does anybody, is anybody using page builders right now in the, in the group for your thing? Um, Elementor, Divi, okay. And then there's, of course, WP Bakery, Cadence. Is it like Cadence, it's not so much of a page builder as much as it is an extension of the Blocks library, but we're gonna talk about those as well. Beaver Builder, definitely a page builder. All right, so yeah, there's my beaver down there in the bottom corner. <laughs> beaver Builder in the bottom corner. All right, so uh, seasoned digital marketing expert and WordPress uh, enthusiast. I got started with WordPress in 2008, I believe. I was building a, a website and I wanted to come up with a way, I thought I invented WordPress actually when I, when I found it. I, I thought, man, it would be really cool if I could find a way that I didn't have to write, go in and code the website. Like, wouldn't it be cool if there's just a simple interface and we could control it with a database and then somebody's like, you talk about WordPress? That happens with me all the time. I invented the water pick. I invented a lot of stuff. Then I find out that these things actually exist. But 2008 is when that happened. Uh, a few years after that, I found out that there's a whole community around WordPress, even in Buffalo. And that's, that's how I met Ben and, and Andy. And then the rest is, is history that brought me here today. Um, but my main goal and the reason that I got involved with page builders at all is because I work with clients. Like I said, I'm a consultant. I do a lot of digital marketing. Obviously, we build custom websites. Um, and it's cool if the client knows exactly what they want and how they're going to use the website. I can build a custom website and you know I've built some really intricate back-end interfaces. It's built on WordPress, but the dashboard is very customized to the user. They go in there, it doesn't even look like the uh, traditional WordPress admin and dashboard when I'm done with it. And it's just got the features that they need. Like, oh, you're an auto dealer, for example, and you just need to add new inventory of cars. That's it, it's a custom post type, you go in, it's got the fields that you need to fill out, 
and that's all you have to worry about and it automatically goes where it needs to go on the front of the site. You don't have to do anything, right, as far as coding it. But what I found is a lot of businesses, uh, small businesses, they're kind of developing their brand. I'm working with small and up and coming businesses a lot. They're developing their brand. They don't know who they are yet. They don't know what their customers want. So they would come to me, you know, we build the site, we go through this whole process and then Three months later, they come to me and be like, you know, can we put like a slider here? And now I got to go into the theme. I got to uh, revamp it, launch a version 3.0 or whatever it is that now includes the slider. And Page Builders just gives them a real easy way where I can say, you know, you want to add a slider to your website? Either I can do it for you. A lot of times they just want me to do it. But some, some small business owners do like the ability to just go in and make modifications on their own. They don't want to have to call me up every single time and pay me to update the title of a, a page or add a blog post or add new pictures to their website, for example. So Page Builders gives them that functionality and that ability. So what are Page Builders? Page Builders are... They're kind of extensions that pick up the slack of where WordPress core is limited right now. Um, so for example, Divi, that's the one that I prefer to use uh, more often than any of the other page builders just because it's really well supported. It's got great features that are constantly coming out and it's really easy for me to show my clients how to use it. And there's not a lot of breaking points. Elementor, very functional, very, you know, has a lot of extendability. That's another uh, page builder. But Elementor, you know, you can get lost in the, in the weeds in that really easily, where I find that Divi is just a little bit more intuitive for most of my clients to use, so I, I tend to go with that. But again, we use page builders because it's drag and drop. It's kind of the what you see is what you get that Ben was talking about. And what I really like about them is it gives you the ability to build it on the front end of the site. So a lot of people right now are migrating over to like a Squarespace or even Wix has gotten, you know, it used to be like this cheesy, cheap product. And Wix has even gotten a little more advanced with their front end site building capabilities. Where if you want to add a slider to the page, you pull up the page, you click a button at the top, now you're in edit mode and you drag the slider exactly where you want it to be on the site. You add a couple of settings to it or tweak a couple of settings and hit publish and your site is live and it works for you. Right? You can see what it's going to look like in mobile, on tablets, and on, on full screen. So that's the power of, of a page builder. You don't have to write a lot of code. You don't have to write CSS. They give you like a whole control panel. So if you want to change the color of something, you click the color that you want. It's got a full extensive font list that you can uh, utilize if you want to change the fonts. Uh, ben showed some of the limitations of the WordPress blocks editor in the last talk that we did. So we don't have to rehash all of that. Uh, but the challenges of choosing the right page builder for you and even the challenges of choosing a page builder, and what I always tell people is when you go with a page builder, you have to commit to it, right? Because one of the downsides that we're going to talk about in a few slides is they're not easily interchangeable. So basically, the page builders work by just encapsulating all of the content into these massive short codes that include all of those settings that you're trying to, um, that you're trying to, get that plugin or that, that module to look like. It incorporates it all into one massive shortcode, and then that's what gets saved in the content database. So Elementor doesn't understand Divi shortcodes. Divi doesn't understand Elementor shortcodes, and WordPress doesn't understand any of their shortcodes. So when you'll see when I export this to an XML file like you would with any other WordPress site that just spits out a file and you can import it into any theme and for the most part, it's going to work unless there's a ton of customizations. Uh, you can't do that with page builders. But the cool thing is with page builders, you don't really need to do that. Divi is so extensive that any design that you can think of, any functionality for the most part that you can think of, you can make it happen with that page builder. Elementor is so, like, there's tons of website examples out there that are built with Elementor that you look at these things, you're like, wow, I can't even believe they did that 
in Elementor, but you can do it because they have extensibility with coding modules and uh, with code modules, and, and then you could do child themes and all kinds of cool stuff that really enhances the functionality of the, the page builder itself. So some of the popular page builders out there that we just talked about, a couple of them, Elementor, Divi, um, Cadence-ish, and I got a number three on the list because it's really gaining in popularity with blocks and a lot of people are doing it. It's by Stellar WP where um, you know, Michelle, Michelle works. So, but I say ish because it's not really a page builder. It's more of an extension of the block editor. Um, WP Bakery, Beaver Builder, Tatsu, which I'd never even heard of, but a client of mine that um, has a pretty large website it's all built on Tatsu, and uh, it's a page builder. And then, of course, the WordPress block editor, to some extent, is kind of keeps moving more and more toward this Divi-like, Elementor-like page builder setting where what you see is what you get. I don't think we can do front-end editing yet in the block builder. Anybody know? There's, the newest version of the full site editor has a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I imagine that they're all going to get there because these things are so popular and that's what people want. That's why they go to Squarespace because it's easy for a small business owner to just get started. The other thing that site builders do really well is, and you're, we'll see this in the demonstration, is they give you a ton of pre-built, really professional looking layouts to get started with where you hit the button and exactly what the theme preview looks like is exactly what you get. And then you just kind of got to go and edit those modules. Whereas I think everybody in this room that's worked with WordPress for any amount of time has gone into the theme library. You say, wow, that theme looks beautiful. I love the way that looks. And then you hit the button, you install the theme and it's nothing there. It's a hello world with the thing. It could look like that thing on the screen, but it doesn't. And it takes a lot to get it to look like what they had the picture in the preview to, to work with. So some of the features of the page builders. They've got a comprehensive library of templates and modules that you can use and powerful page editing tools. Like you can go in there, you can control everything from font size to color to margins and spacing and animations now are built in. The gradient uh, feature that Ben was talking about is a limitation. It's got a Figma-like thing where I can set up the stops along the way. I can set up the degrees that I want my gradient to do. I can build really extensive things. I can do blending modes and all kinds of stuff without knowing a line of CSS, right? Things that would take... If I was going to write the CSS, well, some of it is kind of really easy to do in CSS, but other things would be, you know, a few lines of coding and some really good tinkering to get it to work the way you want it to. These things, you could just do it with their editing tools right there. The interfaces are generally pretty easy to use. It's got a streamlined workflow. What does that mean? It means that I know uh, WordPress core now has these reusable blocks. But one of the really cool things about page editors is you can build layouts and then save those layouts. You can make them global so that you're just editing it in that one place and all across your entire website, it just updates automatically, right? It could be a good thing. Sometimes it could break the hell out of your site if you're not aware that it's a global module and you thought you were just changing something on the home page, and then you go and find out later on that you changed it throughout the entire site. But that's a really helpful, helpful feature. And then, you know, just the ability to import uh, layouts, export layouts that you built already. So I'll do that a lot of times where I built something for a client and I want to use that exact same thing on this site. And instead of having to rebuild it, I used, you used to be able to just hit an export button and you could export that um, that layout, that section, whatever it is, and bring it into, import it into the new site. Now most of the page builders, like uh, Divi especially, has a Divi global library. So you just upload it to the cloud, and as soon as I, as soon as I sign into Divi, it automatically is available to me, and I can insert it into any other client's website really easily. So that comes in handy with like contact us sections, and then all you got to do is change out like you know what the contact information is. But I don't got to go through the process of building out the layout 
all over again from scratch. So that really speeds up like a development workflow. And then you get pixel perfect layouts without coding, right? So you can just drag things around wherever you want them to be, switch the mode um, where we were talking about you can't really do editing in design or in like mobile view on WordPress block editor. You have every single different screen size that you could imagine and you can set custom screen sizes uh, in there and then you can um, edit those sites pixel perfect right there in the editor and make it look the way you want it to. The limitations though are you do suffer performance issues. If you compare, and Ben was telling me a story when we were talking earlier about a, what was it, Elementor or Divi? Divi. So he had a Divi site and he rebuilt the site just using the block editor and it was like a 20 point improvement you said in Lighthouse or something like that? Yeah, it's like near 100 now, it was only 40 or 50. Oh, so yeah, so went from like a, what's that? Performance Yeah. So it went from a 40 or a 50 to a 100. It's just, and it's the exact same layout, it's the exact same design, he just built it in uh, WordPress native block editor versus using Divi. And why? Because Divi, whether you want to use it or not, you get all of this, it's like the whole kitchen sink is coming into that, onto that server with you. So every Google font loads, whether you use those fonts or not. So there are some real strong advantages now, to... I just want to make a caveat on that. It's not that every time you make a website, the video is going to be bad. There were definitely some things that the person did. Right. I would say yes. Yeah. It also depends on what you expect. I mean, if you look at a lot of commercial websites and you run them past any kind of performance uh, rating system, I mean, it, a lot of the stuff is so incredibly slow and you wonder what the people had in mind and you realize they're wiping themselves an awful lot of brokers even though the website it just doesn't perform very well, but I guess it performs well enough. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, there is, so there is some who gives a crap, but there is also some implications as far as SEO ramifications now with Google's new algorithm that does rank and consider site speed very important, especially that first content paint. So. Yeah, and Wegmans is also a massive brand that everyone's been using for years. And you yeah. know, that's probably going to have survive. Right. Well, if you're trying to get noticed and if you're competing on a local level with somebody, you know, but we're talking about milliseconds, and in most cases, it's things that are not even noticeable to the user. But they are kind of slow, and you'll see it when you're editing the site. You know, the, the WordPress block editor works, right? It's fast, out the box. You go to edit something, you're editing. Divi, you're, wait, you're gonna see in a second when we do this. You're waiting a second for everything to load, all of the modules, all of the editing modules, and it's like, okay, I gotta wait five minutes for this thing to, it's not five minutes, but it feels like it sometimes. Uh, the learning curve. But there's a learning curve with WordPress, you know, block editor, you've gotta figure that out. There's a learning curve with anything. What I like about some of the page builders is when you start using it, they have, Entire teams behind them, when they draw new features out, they're backwards compatible, they work, and they follow the same functionality and the same structure as every other release before it. So if you use Divi three years ago, four years ago, and you jump into Divi today, there's new modules, there's some new features in there, but the editing side of it, you're going to open it up. You might have some new options available, but everything is going to work exactly the same as it did three to four years ago. You know, you just, you're not you don't have to relearn every single time. Sometimes WordPress drops some stuff off and you're like, okay, this, like, it's just a couple releases ago. It's like, this does not look any, if you didn't use WordPress, you used it like when I started in 2008 and then you jump in today, you're like, oh, I know WordPress. You don't know WordPress. <laughs> you have to kind of stay with it a little bit. Feature bloat. 
uh, that's what we were talking about. Like Ben's, Ben's trying to figure out what do we need to get into WordPress core. And we went down this rabbit hole of, I want this, I want that, I want this. Well, the page builders can just do that, right? So that's what ends up happening. They're trying to be all things to all types of businesses. You want to be able to build an e-commerce site to a you know, small mom and pop shop. You want to be able to do all of that and you want to give all of your users that ability so you can widen your customer base. But at the same time, when every time you do that, you keep adding modules. I don't need those. You, know, you were saying, I just need a text module and a contact form. That's what I need for, and, and maybe an image up at the top. That's all this little you know, shop needs. So you get a lot of feature bloat with it. And then, like I was saying earlier, it's not easily converted to other platforms. So what I want to do here is just dive into and if you guys aren't using local by, uh, it's not local by Flywheel anymore, right? It's WP Engine now? Yeah, okay. It's just called local WP now. So for those of you that don't know, I should just say, so this is just a local editor. You can spin up, I just hit this plus button, I can spin up a new WordPress website in a matter of a couple minutes. You have full functionality. Full, full features, you can pull up your editing software and jump right into it. Yeah. All right, so this is a, this is just a uh, demo site that we created using Divi. So we're just gonna look at Divi and I just wanna kind of break through, use this to uh, showcase the structure. I was going to do this all with slides, but all right. So you see, the back end looks exactly the same as any other any other back end. I also loaded Elementor on here, so we could just take a look at some of that. And the crazy thing is that you can load this. This site's going to be really underperforming because I've got Elementor and Divi loaded at the same time, and. Uh, I might as well throw Cadence on here too. Okay, so if I go to the, if, let's just say I wanted to add a new page here. Using Divi, and you can see already there's like a little, a little lag time here, but I can name the page contact us, right? contact us, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then I can go and use my Divi Builder. I'm probably offline. Awesome. Let's try it again. Okay, we're in. You can see we're loading, loading, loading. I know. Let's try this again. Let me just add it. All right, so I can enable the visual builder here on the front. I'll just use this home page that I have here. I'll show you how I made the home page just using the pre made templates. But this is what we're talking about. This, like when you go to edit a WordPress site in the block editor, I would have already been in there. Here I had to wait for all of this stuff to load. But now that I'm in here, I have full control over this site. And what I want to show you here is that every, no matter, I don't care what page builder you're using, every one of them kind of follows this same structure. You have a section, right? And Divi, they're always blue, right? So if I, anything I want to control on the section, I can hover over that. I know it's blue, so this is the section that all of these contents are in. Inside of a section, you have rows. You can have as many rows as you want inside of, a, inside of a section. And the rows contain columns. So if I wanted to change the column structure from, this is a single column website. If I wanted to change that, I could just hover over here. I could do it over here in this little layers section. I like using the layers a lot. But I could just hover over this and click on the columns here. 
and I could turn this into a two column, three column, four column section. It's going to look like crap in a second, but it'll be a four column section, right? Now, what Ben was showing earlier is if, if I add a text column in here, I'll talk about these modules in a second. But now I have a text column and now I have this one long row and then this little tiny row over here. And Ben was saying it would be nice if you could easily make all of these the same size. Well, they, they've solved that problem. You just go into the sizing tab here and you say, I want equal, equalize these column heights. And then instantly, you, instantly, <laughs> instantly, Well, instantly we're supposed to have equalized column heights here, which will, it will work. It does work. I've used it a gazillion times. I don't know sure what's happening here. If I want to go back, I could just do this. Yeah, live, live demos <laughs> never work. All right. So anyway, so we got our section, we got our row. And if you go to Elementor, I'm going to show you in a second. It's the same exact structure. Uh, WP Bakery, Beaver Builder, same kind of thing. Section, row, and then inside of your row, you have modules. And this is the power of your page builder. So if I want to add a new module here, this is a text module, but I can come over here and I have, let me just blow this up so we can see. I have all of these different things. I could add an accordion, audio, bar counters, videos. I love this coding block that we were talking about earlier where I could just add any, um, I know, uh, WP Core allows me to add an HTML code. Does that accept JavaScript? No, it's that actually. Yeah. So this, the, with this coding block, I can insert JavaScript. I can put jQuery in that. Whatever we need to do uh, in that coding block, it is full code. So that's always a nice, a nice option. I want to add a form here, an email opt-in form or any kind of form. I want to just get a, a contact form in here. This is Divi. This is Divi. Yep, I could just click on this, and it gives me all of these features here. And then, of course, in the design, I can set up a CAPTCHA. I can do all of this, all of this stuff just easily right here in my page builder. I don't have to go and install a plugin for a form. Now, I generally use Gravity Forms just because I really like Gravity forms, I like the functionality of them. But this form, if you just need a quick and dirty form that works, that strips out spam and does it, it comes right out of the box in the, in the page builder. So WordPress, you would have to kind of use a plugin in order to do that, whether it's Contact Form 7 or Gravity Forms or, you know, take your pick. WP, WP Forms, I think, is, a, is another one. Or you could get creative like Ben does, and he just uses the comments. Um, section that's built into uh, WordPress as the form, which is a cool option as well. But everything's right here. So if I click on the gear, if I want to make a change, I don't like the color of this text, I just click on the gear, and now I have in this design tab here, and what's cool about these in Divi especially is if I don't know where I'm supposed to go, I can just highlight it and click on this little paintbrush, and it'll take me exactly where I'm supposed to be. Now I have all of the fonts that I could possibly want, all of the Google font libraries here, right? But it also gives me the ability to upload a custom font if I needed to do that for, uh, for a client that's using a specific font, right? So I could change the font, I could change the uh, color, everything that's in here. Even the color palette that's down here by default, I can change this default color palette to whatever I want. So it gives you these whatever it is, six, seven, eight colors off the bat. So if I know I'm working with a specific color palette for a client and their red is a little bit different, I can just come in here, put in their custom red, and then when I save that, it'll be available on every module in every capacity that I use that color palette throughout the entire website. They also do a thing called global colors in here, which I thought was really cool. Not to try and make this a Divi I'm not affiliated with them at all. And I used to be like so anti-page builder. I was such a WordPress like hardcore, like get into the themes, build custom themes, 
what are you doing using page builders? Michelle, uh, you know, we used to harass her a little bit when she would come in here with Divi. And then I was like, you know what? For my clients, this just works. They can wrap their heads around it. They don't have to call me up every single time they want to make a change. They just call me up when they broke the whole damn thing. And then they say, what happened? But it's okay, because I have a backup copy of it. So, um, so that's the nice part about, about this. If we wanted to go in, and these are the kind of things I want to show you here. So let's say I exit this now. And I go in and I say, I'm going to edit this page with the page builder. Just the regular WordPress. I'm going to hit edit page here. This is going to take me to the back end of WordPress, what you're normally used to seeing. And it's going to give me two options. It's going to say edit with the Divi builder. And you can see now that we've built it with Divi, it's kind of making that front and center. I have Elementor on here, so I'm not even going to get to that because normally you wouldn't have both. Or I could say return to default editor. So if I return to the default editor here, and in this case, I just put some, some stuff here. Now, you don't even see this on the website. You didn't see this on the page anywhere because it doesn't exist. But if I hit update now, if from this default editor, all of that work that we just did in Divi, it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. This is what's there. This is what's saved in the database. And that's what's going to be on your, this is now my front page. All right? But what's cool is if I go and I use enable the, the, the Divi Visual Builder, and then I go back and I put that Divi in there, you can see this still persisted, whatever I had in the database, because Core is using the Core WordPress database tables to store it. Divi's doing it a little bit differently. So all of this stuff persists in the database. If I go and I export the content from here, just so you could see what this would look like, this is all the crap you get from a Divi. So this is what you'd be importing into another, into another theme. Does a block editor create the same type of short code uh, spaghetti? No. This is, this is just the crap. I mean, look at every single little thing that you could possibly imagine. So the block editor is leveraging the database. This is not leveraging the database. The content's still there. You know, it's still embedded in the page. It's still there. Um, so search, I'm not exactly sure how they do it, but search works very well on Divi sites. You know, if you use the, the WordPress search module, it definitely finds all of the, the content. content. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know how that's possible, but I don't know if that's Divi magic because I'm using the Divi search module. I don't know that I've ever gone and used the actual core WordPress. So I don't know if they have their custom thing going on there. But here's one of the other powers of, of a page builder over WordPress, in my opinion, is for a lot of clients that are just, or not clients, but just people that are just starting out with a website, they're not designers, they're not coders, they're not developers. Like Canva is so popular right now Right? Everybody in the room probably has used Canva or uses Canva at some point, right? We're doing presentations on it now because we're not designers, but Canva just makes it easy because you can find a template that works and then just modify the text to what you wanted it to, to be. And it just, it was created by a designer. It looks really professional and really good. And you don't need to be a rocket scientist to, to do it, right? So here in, in Divi, we have a ton of pre-built layouts. So if you're a bookstore, a sunglass shop, 
a barber shop, you know, whatever it is, you can find something and it doesn't even have to be like, you could be a, a barber shop that really likes the look of this esthetician website. It doesn't really matter, right? It's going to bring in all of these images into your image library. That's kind of, you know, the downside of it. So whatever's in this theme, it's going to bring in. Um, but the fonts are all selected, so font pairings are all there for you. And you might just really like the way that this design looks. All right? Um, I used the marketing agency one before. Let's say we're going to do, uh, we're an attorney. There's an attorney layout pack. It gives you all of these different pages. You can view them here, just kind of get a sense. Like that's a really professional, good looking start to an attorney website. All right? So if I start with this layout and I just use that layout, it's going to get me 80%, 90% of the way to a finished product. This guy's an attorney. Right? He just needs something up there so that he can establish himself as a professional out there that has a website and, and um, people can contact him. This is going to have a contact form that he could just plug in his email where he wants it to forward to and the emails are going to come to him and his clients are going to say, wow, that's a really good looking website. They're not going to look at it and say, oh, that's a pre-made Divi built website. Some of them you will look at and say, oh, that's a pre-built Divi made website. Now it takes a second, obviously Wi-Fi speed, whatever, because it's importing all of those pictures and everything into here. But once you have it, and, and it, you see it kept my WordPress block up there, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And even though I deleted it there, you'll see, we could show you, it's still in the database. So if I get rid of all of this thing and I swap themes, all of that stuff that I put in the content and whatever I used in the block editor, the WordPress block editor, it stays even though I just deleted it off the front end of the site. Yes? Do you have any experience building sites with page builder that are multilingual? I do not. I'm familiar with page builders and use them often, but I'm a Canadian, so we often struggle with English and French. Yeah. I know, so I, I do a, um, it's a, the website, um, we have this girl coming to our thing from um, Haiti maybe. So the entire website is in French and then I have to actually convert it to English, but even the, all of the functionality. So when I'm working on it on the back end, they're using Elementor. All of the Elementor functions are in French right. on that page builder okay. and it's not like a special plugin or anything I don't know how it's how it's happening but when I go in there I have to actually switch it to English because everything by default is in Fran uh, French and I don't know if it's because that's where they installed it so when they installed it there it just kind of knew I don't know you can change the administrative language yeah. oh you can yeah you can use the oh there you go I would hope so too. Okay. Yeah, we can look at that in a in a second and just see show me where that is because I'm not familiar with that. Yes. That's accessible. I mean, it's accessibility in in some some part. But so here, everything's here, and then I could just exit this page builder and. You know, we have, this, we have this layout. There's contact pages, there's a whole theme pack around this one attorney's website. Client reviews everything. So, you know, a lay person that's not a developer can get up and running relatively quickly. If they wanted to, um, oh, I wanna add another review here. They could just duplicate this role, right? So they could just easily hit this. And now they've got two rows of usable testimonials that they can add to their website without knowing how to code a single thing. All right. I like, I like that stuff. 
Yep. And it just brings you back and then you're loaded and you're, you're looking at the website real time. You don't have to do anything extraordinary in order to use these. So going back to my um, talk here, because I think we're almost out of time or we are out of time, I don't know. Um, but in conclusion, present. <laughs> in conclusion, um, you just got to choose the right page builder because when you do it, you're kind of stuck with that page builder for better or worse. And I, to just demonstrate that real quick, that's what I wanted to do the last thing, is if I come back here now and I go into the dashboard, just like you would with any other thing, and I said, oh, you know what? I want to go ahead and use 2022 or whatever. What do I got in here? 2021, I'll use 2023. We'll use the newest one, right? So I have this beautiful, Right now, attorney website that's killer. This thing looks awesome. I want to just bring that into 2023. And even if we just do the live preview, we're going to get a bunch of crap. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, a bunch of crap is the technical tech. So look at that. I mean, this is what you get. You get this. It's a short, it's a code block with all of the short codes in it. That's what your new website, that's what your attorney website would look like if you try to convert it to another theme. That, that, that's kind of sucky though, that there's no way to have a conversion. Which, you know, Maybe somebody well, that, that's, 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 but Divi doesn't want you to switch. Yeah. They they just import the they want you to keep using the page builder. So even Elementor, you could export all the blocks, but then on the new theme you have to install the Elementor plugin in order to convert those back to what you have. Yeah. Yeah, I like how you like it to be like all symbiotic, but they're competing with each other. You know, yeah, even, yeah, yeah. even WordPress is like coming up with these little things that are getting closer and closer and closer to Divi and Elementor. Well, that's why, that's what I'm saying. I would make, yeah. the, I would make the argument that you're cutting your nose, nose off to spite your face by not offering that because people are just, these guys are jerks. And right. there's a better solution that, that does offer that. So that's, well, yeah. of course, the other issue is that all the page builders cost money and WordPress doesn't. Yes. Well, that's another, yeah, that's another thing. You're paying, you know, a licensing fee. So like Divi is $80 a month, or not a month, a year, $80 a year as of today to use the Divi license. But if you wait until the end of the year, you can get a license. Oh, no, wait, 80, is it $80 a lifetime? No, oh, yeah. 200 bucks if you wait till the end of the year, you get a lifetime license. 200, yeah, lifetime. Ben loves lifetime deals. But I mean, sometimes that's the question. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Divi and Elementor, which are, you know, don't, let's not split hairs, but they're like the top two. Correct, yep. Popularity, and, you know, Beaver is probably a three. And then WP Baker, which pretty much was popular, and it's sort of waning. But what? Like, people are going to be screwed. You say they don't want, you know, Divi doesn't want you to leave. Right. Yeah. WP Bakery, what was nice about that though is it used the core database tables. So that everything was wrapped in a short code still, but everything was still in those core database tables there. Um, but I, I hear what you're saying. Like that's that's a real concern. You know, the you gotta stick with one of those top ones. So when you're choosing your page builder. I would, you know, as we're saying here, stick with one of those top 
couple of page builders because they're really gigantic. They have huge budgets behind them. They have huge teams and support behind them. There's tons of information out there and they're very good with support. Uh, but if you go to one of the smaller page, but like Tatsu, I'd never even heard of Tatsu. And this guy's got a gigantic website that is very important to his business and it's built on this page builder that I've never even heard of. And that page builder really could go belly up. Everything's in short codes and there's no like real support to transfer that to like Divi. Like if Divi went belly up, I guarantee like automatic would write a plugin or something that would convert all those websites because that's a ton of WordPress websites that people are just going to go to Squarespace or something. What's the threshold of complication? I'm sorry. What's the threshold of like that's complication? Next. Okay, you have a brochure website for that lawyer. You don't have a lot of complicated WooCommerce. You have a lot of stuff going. On. Yeah. What would you say a ballpark threshold of complication before you say, "I this is too much for a page builder website"? Like WooCommerce and some stuff. Like would you do a page builder with WooCommerce? Well, I. <laughs> So I manage a, um, a site or advertising at least for a, a site that we sell millions of dollars worth of saunas worldwide, right? And it's built on Elementor and WooCommerce. It's slow as shit, I'm sorry. It's very, it, we get a D. The score is a D. I have a thing that just monitors, it swaps. So sometimes I'll get up to a C or a B. This thing is constantly at a D. Like, I'm not managing the website, I've just managed the sales, but I'm like, you're really killing my ad uh, quality score and we're paying more than we should be to get customers to this website just because of how slow the damn website is. We gotta do something. And it's, they just, they built it in Elementor and they have WooCommerce in there. Now you got two of the biggest like slugs going head to head here, slowing down the website, but we still sell millions of dollars of saunas with it every year, so. <laughs> what would you say be something with that much stuff on it? Would you say it might've been better off to use the block editor with I would do a, I would, I would do probably with that site, a cause, I wouldn't use the, I wouldn't use a page builder. Yeah, we're investing so much, they're making so much money on this website that at that point, there's enough of a budget there to invest in a custom solution. I would still build it using WordPress, possibly using WordPress because there's a lot of content that they're updating as far as like products, whatever. I'd still use WooCommerce because it's, it's great, right? But to use the page builders to do all of the other stuff around that, I'm like, oh my God, we're, we're killing ourselves here, guys. Well, I think you answered my question because yeah. like there definitely is a threshold. Right? Oh, for sure. Like, look at your requirements. Be like, look at your budget. Look your at your requirements. requirements. There's no way page builder yeah. needs to be slow to ship. Yeah. Net. Yep. Well, Louis dead. <laughs> Louis dead, yeah. <laughs> Louis dead and nobody knows how to write dot net anymore. Louis just <laughs> Rest in peace, Louis. Right. Yeah. And that's what's nice about WordPress is that there's so much support, Divi, so much support, Elementor, so much support. I think WordPress block editor Ben, so just to follow up and close this thing out, Ben showed like how it keeps progressively getting closer and closer to no code. But I think they're mindful of all of the bloat that comes with a Divi and an Elementor. So I like the smart approach that they're taking. We just like them to get there a little bit, a little bit quicker. Now, if you're somebody like me, Ben, whatever, some people in this room that can modify those blocks and know how to write the code to block, modify the block, it's great. You know, you can build really elaborate websites right now using the WordPress block editor and it's fantastic. But to ask a client then to turn the site over to a client. So you got to think about who's using the site. And that's where I had to get in my own head. Like I could do all of this stuff, but they're going to have to call me up because they're going to say, oh, I want to add a slider. Even if WordPress adds the slider, they're going to hit the button, add the slider, and it's going to be off to the damn side of the screen. And then they'll be like, uh, Ron, why does this look like this? You know, it looks like crap. You know, this is going to be the most bleeped out WordPress talk today. So. <laughs> 
Yeah. Anyway, did you have a question? I'm sorry, you had a question. Yeah, no, I was just saying, uh, I totally agree about the quantum and the page builders. I have, I'm working with a non-conference group, and they're working with a page builder that, I don't know, you've heard of, of Veda? Oh, yeah, Veda, yeah. Very popular. But the thing is, they're charging them in order to express a lot of components that they built. Uh, so as of right now, the site is out of date. They can't get in touch with the person who last touched it. Uh, and they can't log in to the account because that person has logged in information. So they're utilizing a page bill that he does about two years ago. Uh, so they're, they're trying to figure out like, what am I supposed to do? Like, do I go with a different page builder? So Yeah. No, yeah, those are the, uh, the challenges. Louis, it's another Louis situation. We got hit by a bus. <laughs> At the risk of like opening another can of worms here right before this time spot is about to be up. Um, FSC, page builder, you know, like where, no, just go with that. <laughs> like FSC versus page builder. Can you do a lot of things using the front end? I don't know much about FSC, but can you do a lot of those things just with the FSC? So isn't the, is full site editing, like I always consider that the same as blocks. Yeah, is the block editor expanded to the entire site, the header, the footer, all of your template elements? Like, can you do a lot of that stuff you would show in the episode? Yeah. So yeah. is there an argument to say, just use that to see it now? There is an, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the option, but again, we still have some limitations there because they can't build all of the functionality that it doesn't give you all those right. So you got to just got to wait for you know automatic to release 0.5, and then oh we're going to get into a new version, and then everything's going to look completely different in the editor again. You're going to have to relearn everything, but um, you know Divi's already doing those things. Elementor's already doing those things. So again, it's you've got to consider your use case. If it was just me, and I know I'm managing the site, I'm not using a gigantic page builder, right? Um, well, my current website is just a product I was demoing. I was showing somebody, like, you could just turn your Facebook page into a thing. And they were like, oh. So over coffee, I showed them how we could do it with this um, thing called PageVamp. But um, my normal website is just an HTML JavaScript website that I, that I built. It's super fast. It's super quick. It's got all the functionality that you need. It's just HTML5 and JavaScript and it does everything that I need it to do, and I built it, I maintain it, but I gotta go into the code editor when I wanna do something. There is no database, there is no like backend stuff, I just you know, code everything out by hand. It's super fast and super, that's good for me, but it's not good, I would never turn that site over to a client and say, here, this is your website. Yeah, yeah, you got to FT, how do you get it? You got to FTP into the site, you know, get an SSH, uh, go ahead and install VS Code, and then this is what you got to do, right? You Dreamweaver? Does this still exist? No. It does? Oh, wow. Okay. Stops paying or it dies. Yeah. That license stays with the site forever and never has to be, you never have to interact with Divi to re verify it. Right. So I'm a developer. I issue licenses to the sites that I build. Exactly. Right. If I stop working with that client, a lot of times I'll revoke the license so they're just not getting updates. Or if for some reason I don't stop working, but I just stop using. I stop using Divi for my projects. I say, oh, you know what? I'm done with Divi. Block editor's great. I'm not going to pay this stupid thing anymore. It's a lifetime thing, I know. But I'm not going to use it anymore. I cancel my account with Elegant Themes. All of a sudden now, all of those websites are not receiving any updates. They got to go and get their own licenses for, for the web. But that's with like my Gravity Forms licenses that I share and like all of, all of those things too. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, and that's what I would do if if, if anything like that happened. Even when they, you know, decide they're not going to work with me anymore, I just remind them, like, well, oh, you're just going to have to. You're going to want to buy this and buy this and buy this and buy this. 
Uh, these are all the licenses that are included. What is it? I have heard of it. Cadence then. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, that's what Cadence does. Kind of. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know where we're going to get to or if we're going to get to a point where just automatic acquires <laughs> Cadence because it does a lot of the things that the core block editor, the Ben's wish list, are in Cadence already. That's good. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. yeah. I've only seen it in like articles here and there. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much. And if you have any questions or if you have a website, my, my specialty is fixing broken sites. So if you have a website that you're having a problem or you have a problem you need solved, come and talk to me. I'll hang out at the happiness bar or whatever. I love jumping in and, and trying to help. That's usually where you'll find me. But thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.